Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. The word tonight says it begins with anointing. It begins with anointing. For you to understand what I'm talking about, let's go to that scripture. Isaiah chapter 61 verses, just verse 1. The spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the sovereign Lord. This is an IV. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has done what? Can we read it together? Say, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor hold it there the spirit of the lord is on me why why the question the question is answered in the next the next line the spirit is on me because he has done what this is a serious issue you know jesus christ <laughs> came into the world oh god of mercy he walked the earth did carpentry obeyed the mother lived under joseph he was ordinary in every way except that he was the divine in his fullness in human form when the time came for him to be manifested to be made manifest as the solution of God to every situation and the answer to every question the scripture says now let's look at Luke chapter 4 verse 14 says Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside he taught in their synagogues and everyone praised him shout hallelujah he went to Nazareth God have mercy that I don't go outside. He said he went to Nazareth. <laughs> Nazareth, this man is called Nazarene. But was Jesus born, was Jesus from Nazareth? No, he was not. Jesus at a human level comes from the root of David. And David is from Bethlehem in Judah. And Judah is not, Nazareth is in Galilee one of the towns the cities in galilee <laughs> but when they came back from egypt the angel said uh being warned in the dream the scripture says joseph instead of going to where he should have gone to he diverted to nazareth and the scripture says so that the scripture will be fulfilled that it shall be called how that come on that it shall be called nazarene so a mission by God's grace, we'll find time and talk about the geographical location of Jesus and the implication. I preached that on radio many years ago, very many years ago. The scripture says he went to Nazareth. Why did he have to go to Nazareth to read this scripture? Because he was a missionary to the whole world, but beginning from Nazareth. If you go and read the scripture, I think it should be Isaiah chapter 9. It said, Galilee of Gentiles. The people who live in darkness they have seen a great light nazareth was one of the cities in nazareth in in galilee for those who've been sitting in our place of the world for a long time we've been talking recently we took time to talk about galilee the 20 cities in galilee that solomon gave to king hiram of um, of syria and the man said this is these are useless cities so jesus christ has a way of identifying with what is useless jesus has a way of inaugurating his ministry among those who need him most <laughs> Jesus guys didn't have to go to jerusalem jerusalem didn't need jesus jesus was not popular in jerusalem he died in jerusalem but he lived in galilee oh i don't know if i'm talking to somebody <laughs> jerusalem was the headquarters of religion where pharisees were separate from others where the scribes were honored where the sadducees were wealthy where the kings were mighty but not in nazareth nazareth can anything good come out of nazareth a useless place 
a place a congregation of uselessness and jesus christ took advantage of their uselessness to begin from them i don't know who has a useless story here i don't know who has a destiny that question is asked of you can anything good come out of you inauguration is coming to your destiny if you understood me and you are that person i would have heard you celebrate because what i say is true he went to nazareth and he sat in their synagogue in that nazareth the barren now let's look at nazareth as a region of those that nothing good is expected of them a woman who is married into a family and has gone through 10 years <laughs> she eats well looks beautiful but empty on the inside no fruitfulness that is a nazareth the, the, the daughter the mother-in-law and the sisters-in-law are likely to say can anything good out of good come out of this one after 10 good years of eating our food and drinking our water <laughs> and somebody who does business and business is bad and everybody prospers in that area and when you enter the door is locked that's a nazareth now i want to make you connected because the word of god is not in the air moses says it's not something that is far away you should say who will go there it is so close and it's meant to be close let me tell you we all connect nazareth at different levels the great, great the greatest problem i see sometimes in church is the problem of hypocrisy hypocrisy those who need god who walk around as if they are gods sorry <laughs> people need god but they walk around as if they are the gods means we don't need god so sometimes those people they pray with some kind of unholy comfort they pray with lack of urgency with lack of seriousness uh, because they try to let people know they don't need god they look they dress well and they try to establish order in church but they are not they don't have order in their lives you know sometimes we are afraid of the nazareth in us Sometimes we try to cover the Nazareth with, in us with gold, with beautiful clothes, with titles, with some beautiful externality. But the point is this. God is not impressed by anything you put on top. God wants what is inside. And Nazareth is not outside, it's inside. Before somebody is looking for love and there is no love, it happens on the inside. Before somebody faces rejection, it is an inside thing and how many people have stories they cannot tell anybody that is nazareth all i just want to tell you is that you are in a right place you are in a right place because the inauguration of what is happening right now is actually the inauguration of a new thing in your life i don't know i don't know let me tell you this whole thing is about your destiny this whole thing is about god's agenda it's not as if it's not as if god is lacking in people who are speaking the word but let me tell you i come to realize one thing god is always in a hurry to to bring out a new arrow from his stock god is always in a hurry to bring in case what came from one man didn't didn't succeed and god says i'm not done yet i still have another arrow from my quiver i bring it out what of if i am just an additional arrow in the hand of god to shoot down cancer oh god of mercy, god of mercy. what of if i'm just an additional arrow in the hand of god to penetrate into the places that you have been covering up with empty smiles what of if god just wants to undress you and and expose your vulnerability and make you know that you are weak and put you down so that you can cry you know god likes jacob because jacob is somebody who needs help but pretends to be strong and god will take jacob to the place that there is no wife there is no nobody to help him and god will say let's fight let's wrestle and jacob will say you know what i fought from the womb <laughs> ask esau will tell you i'm a fighter my name actually is a supplanter and you don't supplant without fighting so angel let's fight but that was the last fight of his life because that fight left a mark in his life god was sending him another arrow and the scripture says from that moment jacob was limping it means there was a mark when god takes you to the place you have nobody to help you when he's done with you you can never be the same can i prophesy if you dare to follow god god will take you to the place that is unfamiliar and he will break you he will break you 
<laughs> Let me tell you, when a man breaks you, it's not a good thing. When a wife breaks a husband, it's always bad. When a husband breaks a wife, it's always bad. But when God breaks you, you will love it. Because when God breaks you, the devil cannot touch you again. When Jacob was broken, Esau was ready to hug him. There was no more fight between Jacob and Esau because the last fight had been fought with Angel. I don't know who is ready to fight the last fight these eight days. The last fight after which no family witch will fight you. The <laughs> okay, what took me to this whole thing is Nazareth. This word speaks to me, Nazareth. A people who need help. A people who live in darkness. Nazareth, oh... <laughs> Nazareth can anything good come out of so he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up he was brought up there Jesus Christ didn't need to be brought up in Jerusalem because they will not have a space for him he grew up in Nazareth among the broken the rejected the wounded the depressed he grew up there who knows all this whether he has been growing up in your circumstance in your situation He's been growing up in your depression and you knew nothing about it. He's been growing in the pain in the marriage of a woman who begs the husband for love and the man who begs the, husband, the wife for attention. And God says, I'm not far away. God says, I'm not living in church. I'm not living in church so that you say, let me go to church tomorrow. I will ask God's help. God says, I'm so close to you in your brokenness. I'm so close to you in your mess. If only you knew. That you will turn to me beyond human help and you say my help will come from the lord your eyes shall be opened i didn't hear what i wanted to say your eyes shall be opened the scripture says he went to nazareth where he grew up and on the sabbath day he went into the synagogue he went into the synagogue as was his custom and he, he stood up to read so he used to go to the synagogue Come on, this man will go and sit down in the synagogue and listen to teachings about him. A rabbi will try to make a show of knowledge about the one who was sitting down there. How humble this man. And when he comes down, how oh, glory to God. If you know God, your life cannot be the same. How God will sit down, how the word of God will sit down and hear the word taught. How the mystery of the ages will sit down and the rabbi will struggle to explain the mystery. And he was patient, not me. He will sit down, the rabbi will show, make a show of his foolishness, not being able to teach the word properly. And the word was right there, sitting daily, weekly, in patience, in order to connect the nonsense of these people, to be part of the weakness of these people. The scripture says in Isaiah chapter 53, he bore... He bore it all. He came and be, you know, this God is not too far away. You don't need to shout too much for him to hear you. The more broken you are, the closer he is to you. The more depressed. It's just that if you know how to transform your depression into expression and cry like Bartimaeus on the way to Jerusalem and shout, Yeshua, the son of David, <laughs> have pity on me. These days you will transform your pain into expression. When it's time to pray, you will pray as if everything depends on you. You will shout until you shout. You will cry until you cry. You will pray until you know you have prayed. And he will tell you, I've been so close. Thank you, Father. Can you just stand up and lift up your hand and wave? Just wave inside. I don't know. If you have no reason to wave, wave because I know God will change somebody's story. So, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed over to him. And, and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed to proclaim the year of the lost favor <laughs> then this is the real deal the real deal is that then he rolled up the scroll gave it back to the attendant and sat down the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began by saying to them today This is a serious issue. Say today. Today. Yeah. It's a serious issue. Why did he say today? He had, that was not the first time he was in the synagogue. He had been there. 
he, he knew every time he would come sit down he will see a man with pain but he will not do nothing about it because his time had not yet come he will see a woman that needed a touch nothing will happen he waited patiently because there is a time called appointed time but when the appointed time came what did he do he read from the scripture he said the spirit of the lord god is upon me why because he has anointed me before this time it's not as if the spirit had not been on him jesus is assuming the prophecy jesus is walking into what had been said of him jesus is walking into what had been recorded jesus was unveiling the scripture was leaving the scripture it was coming out of the bible they were the people of the bible jews don't preach in, in the religion of Israel and judaism there is no preaching there is teaching islam is like why islam is so dangerous and so strong because they don't preach they teach in christianity a lot of preaching but what changes culture and destinies and make people die for something is teaching teaching many people may not be attracted to teaching when you are a teacher you have fewer members when you preach with passion a lot of people and after preaching ask them what did you hear say it was beautiful it was hot <laughs> very hot now don't joke with preaching you need preaching but there is power i'm just trying to talk about there is power in teaching when he said today this word is being he was talking to people who understood because the first thing a little jew knows is that the father begins to teach him thus says the lord thou shalt love the lord your god with all your heart they, every day they sit down and they recite and they teach and so when he spoke everybody in that synagogue understood the implication when he said the spirit of the lord god at the end of it he said this scripture is being fulfilled he's telling them i am the hope the fulfillment of the hope you've been having i am the expression of your longing i am the the meeting point between your desire and your fulfillment i am i am the joy of your life i am the messiah you have been looking for i am the healing that a sick man has been looking for it's like telling them every time i come into this synagogue i see the limb but i am the walking ability of the limb every time i come in here i see the deaf but i'm the ability for the deaf to hear again he said i am the solution to your situation i am the answer to your question he said i am the health to your sickness i am the turnaround that you need for your movement he was telling them everything he said this today he didn't say go and come back tomorrow he said if you like if you touch me today you will see evidence he didn't say fast and pray he said, today life is in your midst today joy is in your midst today abundance has come in the place of no no he tell it Shh, do you even know why do you even know why he was born in bethlehem you don't understand why he was born in bethlehem bethlehem is broken into beth lahem lahem in hebrew means bread and beth is house door place so he was born in bethlehem because he is the bread in bethlehem he is the bread wait before before in john chapter 6 he will say i am the bread of life he was already born in bethlehem remember noami noami and elimelech they left bethlehem as a result of lack of bread he says i am the restoration of bread in bethlehem <laughs> he says he says if you know me and connect me you don't need to leave jerusalem you don't need to to leave bethlehem and go to the land of the moab because in your lack turn to me i am the bread in bethlehem he said i am the balm of gilead when jeremiah asked is there no balm in gilead he said whoa you know where i'm calling from where i'm coming from when they call you sonny you say whoa so is the war <laughs> in every situation that when they say we shout i need healing we say whoa i am the healing in the midst i'm the balm of gilead I am the rose of Sharon. I am the peace, the shalom in marriage. I, I am, I am the, I am the joy of the ages. I am the light of the world. I, I am the stability in instability. I am the direction in confusion. I am the light. So he says today, <laughs> if you understand what that means, it means you don't need to wait till tomorrow again. 
it says today when you know that what you have been looking for is here today then you will tell tomorrow i know you will come but wait until i'm done with tomorrow today the greatest problem we have is that we miss the opportunity of today while preparing for tomorrow you see people missing what god is doing now because they are so focused on tomorrow there's no better way of predicting tomorrow other than prospering from today taking advantage of him in our midst and, and Isaiah 49 verse 8 says on the day of salvation I, I heard you but <laughs> Paul writing to the Corinthians says <laughs> today <laughs> is the day of salvation so Jesus Christ is the is the is the is the newness is the relevance is the contemporariness is the today of God he is the today of God whatever God had promised in the past he is the today in manifestation just as is current the problem we have is that some people think of just as yesterday they say ah, he used to heal people yesterday today hospitals have taken place of that so you don't need to worry yourself too much about healing ah I don't I don't I don't serve an expired Jesus I'm not saying doctors should be out of business if you meet some doctors when they treat you after some time they ask you do you pray <laughs> because real doctors know there is somebody who is the real doctor jesus can never be irrelevant it is a uselessness of religion that makes him makes us feel that he was only strong yesterday today we can help ourselves today psychology can take his place his power is as raw as ever he says today it begins with anointing tell somebody it begins with anointing when in john chapter 2 mary told jesus they don't have wine just told the mother my time has not yet come just as was saying wait for the manifestation he had the power but he understood times it begins with anointing if all of you if all of us will know that life does not begin until there is anointing then you will be wiser young men who run into marriage without anointing for marriage only to crash you see the greatest prayer we pray in our churches if you find our pastors deliverance is very power is very relevant Re deliverance is the the most vibrant ministry why because ignorance is so high ignorance has a way of putting people in prison and they cry every day deliver me when you pray and they are not delivered even when they are delivered they are not even sure they are delivered because they don't know so they keep looking for deliverance deliverance comes from is a ministry that comes as a result of ignorance because just because if you knew the truth the truth will set you free it's a very serious thing timing he said it begins with anointing i'm going to share a few things with you tonight if you take them in they will bless your life young men don't run into life until you have anointing young women don't trust on the the things you put on your face to look beautiful i'm sorry please <laughs> you need them actually great but don't trust the color of your lips without anointing the color of your lips can attract lust and sex but they add no value to your life let me tell you something the most foolish person looks for wisdom even the devil looks for value that's why the devil doesn't attack useless people he attacks those who carry substance anointing makes the difference even jesus didn't start healing people in the synagogue until he said the spirit of the lord god is upon me it was not for Jesus it was for us just was trying to tell me don't begin until you have the anointing there is so much of failed destinies crashed destinies great destinies who take off woo, only to crash and they crash and they never come out of the wreckage because they lacked the anointing too much of life in a hurry too much of life in a hurry I don't know who I'm talking to. I said too much of life in a hurry. We have a generation that is so impatient. A generation that loves shortcut. 
we are in a computer age we have gone beyond computer the great thing about computer is that the more shortcut you know the greater you are in the system shortcut control d control z control this and you have shortcut but if you bring that into life you will fail shortcut is the easiest way to destruction god is a god of process god had an option of taking the people of israel through shortcut into the promised land he said no let me take them through the long court <laughs> tell somebody time <laughs> god is going to do great things in somebody's life Amen. time just guys the god the scripture says in him dwells the fullness of divinity but in understood like the sons of isaac times <laughs> he understood time he said now this scripture is being fulfilled i have been with you all this while but this is the time of fulfillment today is a time of fulfillment because without anointing life is a mistake i said without anointing marriage is a mistake you cannot get it right in marriage without anointing that's why a lot of people are losing faith in marriage they say marriage is not working why <laughs> there's no anointing okay so what is anointing now before we talk about no about anointing let me tell you a little logic in this just guys said the spirit of god is upon me because he has anointed me which means the holy spirit responds to anointing hmm. which means the holy spirit will not come to a place or to a person that has not been anointed he said the spirit of the lord is upon me why because he has which means without anointing without the without there is no holy spirit is that correct look at that scripture and see if you can correct me if i made a mistake he said the spirit of the lord god is upon me because he has anointed me which means anointing precedes the holy spirit so what is anointing because sometimes we say anointing is the holy spirit oh association but not precisely association he said the spirit of the lord god the spirit of the lord is on me because which means if there is no anointing the spirit is not upon me so what if, so first of all we will talk about the anointing what is anointing let's go to some biblical words anointing is from the hebrew word because we were reading first of all from hebrew from the word meshach meshach in hebrew means to smear smear like you take mud and smear on your face smear on your table to smear rub anointing means meshach which is translated anointing in english means to smear to rub something to paint something to rub something a liquid on top of a surface on top of something to paint something with liquid it means to smear something with liquid but in this case with oil to smear to paint to spread to take oil and then spread so when we talk about anointing it means something is smeared on us the one who is anointed is somebody whom god smears something on him rubs something on him so liquid when we talk about oil the physical oil no matter how much prayer is upon it if god's own invisible liquid is not smeared upon you you are not anointed am i talking to somebody so anointing is smearing smearing say smearing smear smear, smear to smear to make something dirty to paint to put something like you take ink and pour it upon something and spread it and paint it after painting your face with with ink how do you look like are you still the same no you are not which means anointing changes something you cannot rub yourself with paint and be the same actually when you rub your face like people who do some art maybe during show exhibition people can paint themselves black and you will never recognize that person have you seen it before somebody painted black your brother it could be your husband is stand or your wife stands stuck naked and you don't recognize that person when something is painted or some, when something is, is is rubbed on you when something smears you rubs on you and paints you and covers you your surface you are different 
it means anointing has a way of changing you anointing changes you transforms you anointing does something different to your life anointing actually covers you packages you in the true sense of it anointing has a way of changing you so that those who used to know you they walk past you and they don't recognize you why because something has been smeared upon you there is no man who is anointed there is no woman who is anointed and is still the same your mother will de- will know something is wrong with you either positively or different so just like he's saying the spirit the, the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord has done what smeared me with divine liquid <laughs> oil is a symbol of the spiritual liquid if the liquid from heaven does not smear you no matter who blesses your oil you are not anointed anointing covers your nakedness the spirit of god does not rest upon you until the work of anointing is done the work of anointing packages you for god makes you conformable makes you god god compliant it puts you in the place of god robs you takes you from who you used to be from your father and your mother and it does it puts something like you like 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 powder like oil like like paints if it wants you black it paints you black if it wants you white it paints you white you used to be blue but you are now white and now when people see you they used to see you blue standing there and because you are now white they will say good morning you say good morning i say i am still the same one you say i don't understand you i don't know you you know sickness can now see you after anointing doesn't recognize you weakness can see you after anointing doesn't recognize you impotency a man say i've been impotent i know after anointing impotency comes in the night only to know you are too active something has changed tell somebody anointing changes anointing anointing no touch somebody gentle say anointing changes now let me tell you when god wants to change a man what he does is that he smears a man he carries divine paint pause it the angel will just pour paint upon you and you change that's why a lot of time when we come we fight with the word of god when you fight with the word of god you don't obey the word you are, you dodge the divine liquid the word of god will pour some water oil that will come and change your heart he said no 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 <laughs> like some of you are dodging somebody said i still want to fornicate some more you know <laughs> i'm still too young come on i can't. he said you you dodge the divine paint <laughs> I, I am married but how can i be stuck with one woman forever <laughs> need a little bit of fun so you are dodging the water and you dodge the divine paint and you remain the same poverty has permission Mpo Forete has another permission then plus Mpo Foreka, they all have permission after all your tithes and all your offering and seed sowing things still have permission to reach you because you remain naked and you are not covered who is going to dodge the word of god today if you are ready to dodge the word of god ah oh, don't dodge don't dodge don't dodge if you need the word of God to happen to you, let me see your hand. If you need it, stand up and give a shout. So anointing packages everything. Anointing changes everything. Hallelujah. And just as he's telling us, don't go into life until you are smeared. Don't go into life until you are dressed. Anointing dresses you. Anointing covers you. Anointing packages you anointing organizes you anointing repositions you makes you different then the spirit of god has a place to rest now you become spirit compliant spirit friendly anointing makes you friendly with the holy spirit anointing makes empowers the holy spirit to work why so many people after so much fast the, the spirit is still limited is because there is so little of anointing there is so little of rubbing that means there is a resistance resistance in the heart lack of circumcision now the, the ultimate purpose of anointing is consecration god commanded moses to use anointing oil to anoint every vessel that was to be used in the sanctuary it means change the nature don't let the vessel be what the the blacksmith the goldsmith what human hands made when you put anointing upon nature nature changes means put additional value so anointing adds value to your life 
anointing adds divine character to your life anointing adds divine nature to your life anointing makes you available to god anointing makes you consecrated consecration means one with the sacred sacred means divine of god the, the opposite of consecration is profanity profane is common general everybody <laughs> you know ladies be careful how you dress so because the whole of this world system is to make christians worldly so when we talk about ladies you know there's a very big thing now sexy <laughs> your dress is sexy you know that's a big thing when you tell a lady you're sexy whoa, 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 whoa. it means you are reduced to sex nobody cares about what is in your head as long as you appeal to sex it means you are just physical <laughs> all your value is reduced to five minutes of sex with a man if he likes you he comes back if he doesn't like you which is why marriage is no longer stable because soon after a man discovers there is a younger your younger sister is more sexy so he goes after your younger sister <laughs> because everything all you try to do every day is to paint yourself uncover yourself and unveil yourself to be sexy and you are reduced to sex without divine value without worth without divine worth real men of destiny don't need you because real men of destiny they don't look for sex they look for life and so profanity means common the opposite of consecration is profane profane means is available in the market you can buy it everybody it means common everybody can drink from it everybody shares in it but consecration means one con come sacrasio what sacred one with sacred means anointing removes you from the general once somebody has given his or her life to christ at a serious level something happens to that person you discover there are certain clothes you don't wear outside there are certain songs you don't sing there are certain movies you don't watch why because anointing has separated you and now when you keep fighting uh, ha, okay if you want to go ahead go ahead go ahead <laughs> hallelujah that is why a lot of people receive salvation after crusade they lose it they lose it one week after why because they go back enjoying the same movie they used to enjoy the pornographic footages the magazine the conversation conversation the gossip inside of you you hear a voice that tells you no you are no longer part of them come out you are different but something tells you how can i leave this kind of boring useless person ah let me be trendy be part of what is being invoked and you are invoked and you get lost again you become profane when you become profane it means them can share in you spirit husband can have a piece of you spirit wives and children they claim you charm can walk about can walk in you somebody's prediction that it will not be well with you can work because you are available to everybody and everything but when you have been anointed has consecrated you and you accept the consecration and you come out and be apart spirit of husband begins to fight with you because you are no longer connected i don't know you are no longer compliant once you become you become god compliant other things don't work again you can walk upon snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy why nothing can harm you why because you are different the scripture says this thing will happen in the whole of egypt but in goshen it will not happen there why because you are consecrated do you know the scripture says you are a chosen race is it not true a nation set apart set apart means consecrated it means you are not part of them you cannot the greatest problem we have in church church is a fashion the greatest problem we have right now in church church has become a fashion a fad a trendy thing how you dress how you walk how you talk like your pastor like my man of god ah, if you know the prophet a man of god over my life <laughs> Ooh, like my pastor will say ah your pastor oh, my pastor will say let me tell you after everything your pastor has said including me and beginning with me if you are not separate what affects others will affect you when demotion comes generally a general demotion will demote you but when you are separate general demotion will come you will meet people in the general office but you are in a separate office 
before before demotion will come to the separate office the angel say is enough it was meant for them not meant for this one this one is my own this one has been anointed shout anointed <laughs> anointing makes it impossible for you to to suffer general condition you cannot tell me everybody is going through the same thing in your family this is how it has always been so it is like that with you you have not yet started because the purpose of anointing is to separate you from the story of your family the purpose of the anointing is to separate you from a tradition from a culture everything that does not represent god the purpose of anointing is to separate you and because you have been anointed the spirit rests over you and when the spirit rests over you you are the most dangerous human beings on earth i mean the most dangerous personality on earth now we have come to the holy spirit <laughs> He said, the spirit is upon me. Now you understand. If you understand anointing, let me see your hand. Now you understand what anointing. Anointing comes like oil or poured upon you. It can be any liquid. I just pray today in the name of Jesus that as I'm talking, divine liquid from heaven will fall upon you. <laughs> can you stand up? Let me just prophesy over you for at least one minute. Lift up your two hands. I am speaking. Let me tell you, God was telling me that we have oil for anointing. But heaven has a liquid that makes oil. Without that liquid from heaven, oil is an ordinary thing. But when that liquid from heaven falls upon the oil, oil becomes anointing oil. That's why we bless oil before we use. So the purpose of blessing oil before anointing is to cause the liquid from heaven. The divine liquid to fall upon oil, to change the nature of oil, so that oil can become the smearing agent from heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, lift up your hand. I say in the name of Jesus, oh, Papa, release the paint of heaven upon destiny sir. these eight days you will be so smeared and covered that what used to harass you will run away from you you don't understand when something covers you you go to little demons when they see you they run they say mama mama say, say what they say hey, that thing that thing that terrifies us and you are just marching why because you are no longer what you used to be and you are just walking there you are going to where they used to keep the way they used to where they used to bring you down and you go there and those little demons are running away from you why because something has changed may change come now I said, the change happen now in the name of Jesus. You know, the purpose of God for these eight days is to release champions and family. God says, I will pour liquid upon your life that will make you a giant slayer in your family. The easiest way to overcome the enemy is to scare the enemy. What Goliath was trying to do to David was to scare David. When something scares you, it's over you. And when you scare something, it's under you. The purpose of anointing is to make what used to scare you to be scared by you. How many persons will become scary to Satan after this moment? Let the smearing agents from heaven fall upon you in the name of Jesus. You see that? Be seated, be seated. Oh, and just as the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, glory to God. Now, let me tell you something. When the Spirit comes, something is about happening. Now, you know, understand, anointing brings the Spirit. And the Spirit provokes action, proclamation, and speaking. Now, when anointing comes upon you, the Spirit rests upon you. When the Spirit rests upon you, it's not for you to sleep. The Spirit quickens you to speak. The spirit quickens you to act and when you speak or when the spirit rests upon you after anointing and the word goes forth the word becomes what is said which means anointing brings the holy ghost upon you and the holy ghost upon you makes you either speak or causes speaking to come and the holy ghost produces what is said let me take you to genesis chapter one let me make it very simple for you to understand me genesis chapter one the scripture talks about this paradigm i'm trying to share with you oh genesis chapter one it says verse one says listen to this in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth now the earth was formless and empty darkness was over the surface of the deep 
and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters God told me what actually happened before the spirit hover if we are to follow this paradigm the spirit hovered over darkness formlessness and emptiness because God has smeared nothing with his oil it means your life may be nothing but when God smears your nothing with his oil the spirit comes upon your nothing and your nothing becomes something if you understand it everything changes the scripture said the spirit was hovering but the spirit does not just hover you over you into something until there is a word the word gives instruction to the spirit and the spirit does execution the holy spirit is the executive power of god is the one who executes judgment who executes what god speaks when god speaks he sends his son and when his son comes the spirit executes what the son says and what the son does so in the beginning how did god create he smeared nothing with his oil and the spirit rested over nothing and then god said let there be light and the spirit fashioned lights out of nothing that's why we say that god created out of nothing your life doesn't you don't need much in your life for god to change you into a champion you just need nothing and when you are nothing you submit your nothing to god and god smears your nothing with his oil and the spirit rests and then when a prophet speaks why so many speaking from prophet do not bring result it's because you are speaking to people who don't have the anointing and you don't have the spirit resting upon them so you speak and your word falls to the ground because the spirit is not there to produce am i talking to somebody but when somebody has been anointed change and the spirit of god rests upon that person when you see say let there be pregnancy the spirit brings it to pass which means the first thing is not even to pro, pro, is not even to prophesy you shall have twins is to bring somebody face to face with anointing and to live under the power of the holy ghost that is when a prophet who didn't like to prophesy you come in and the spirit will stare, will stare you in the eye because the spirit communicates with the prophet the, the spirit will tell you can't you see there's somebody ready here for twins oh go ahead and speak say there's somebody here and god says you will have twins and the holy spirit brings it out why because you were ready oh am i talking to somebody these eight days the hand of god will rest upon you no that's not the kind of a man i'm talking about i said the hand of god will rest upon you let me tell you the natural we are ending this is how i end the natural tendency of the holy spirit is to bring what the word says when the spirit is rested upon what has been anointed then the word of god will produce effect you cannot carry anointing and the spirit and not bear effect let me tell you david was anointed in first samuel chapter 16 the next chapter chapter 17 there was a result he was anointed the spirit rested upon him the scripture said from that time the spirit began to do what to move david to rest upon david when saul was anointed the spirit began to you know to move him when the spirit when the anointing comes the spirit begins to move and result comes when after david had been anointed the spirit rest and david walked into the battlefield and saw goliath and people were afraid of him so why are people afraid of him that's a candidate for glory when you carry the anointing and the spirit of god what others are running away from you like it because it will bring result and david stood goliath did all the enchantment and all that david said you come against me with your this and that and that but i come against you in the name of the god of israel that you insult as this man was coming with all his strength david ran with nothing a little stone bam the man fell anointing makes mighty mountains to become like little rock by the power of the holy ghost you will do what your father failed to do I said by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be the first person in a family that nobody has crossed. These eight days, I want to challenge you by the power of the Holy Ghost that I don't care for how long people have been stagnant in your roots. I don't know for how long people have been standing still. I don't know for how long you have defied the power of God. But if you allow the anointing to work, the Spirit will cause the mountain to become nothing in the name of Jesus. And every Goliath, every Goliath will become an opportunity for you to shine. 
let me tell you god does not worry when a man is anointed he can allow goliath to come that is why some people say since i gave my life to christ the more i pray the more trouble ah god says you are a trouble carrier now say you carry anointing that's what i've been asking god he said why god do you make my things difficult god said do you know what you carry if you know what you carry you will look for trouble there's something wrong with you if you are of god then you are afraid of something for the scripture says, if god be for us who can be against us is a greater the one that is in us than the one that no stand up tell somebody i'm looking for trouble i'm looking for trouble no stand up tell somebody i'm looking for trouble now be careful oh, be careful oh. before you begin to look for trouble you know get anointing first get anointing tell somebody get anointing first get anointing first get anointing first if you know my god you'll be terrible i'm telling you the truth god told me being an anointing carrier is a trouble troubler it means you have a commission to trouble trouble when they say you will fall god says when i rescue you god does not rescue you in egypt and keeps you in egypt when god rescues you in egypt he takes you to the promised land yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> now let me tell you something god doesn't take you from egypt and keeps you in egypt he takes you from egypt he said i'm taking you to the place that is spacious i'm taking you to a place where you drink from a well you did not drink you did not drink you will you will inherit what you did not plan that is what god does to those who love him and he says abraham because you have not you have not you have not spared yourself of isaac and you give me isaac look at this i will do it when god visited the people of israel he told them i'm the god of abraham the god of isaac he said i'm the god of those who love me and because you children you don't even know me you worship the god of egypt but i remember the one who loved me and gave me his only son just love the lord egypt cannot waste your children i am sharing secret with you love the lord in your generation your children may not know god but on the day of destruction god comes and they will say who is a god who will save us we don't know a god and god will say you don't need to know me but your father knew me your mother knew me i remember ezekiah turned to the wall and asked god have you forgotten god said you cannot try me for i keep my covenant forever when you love god the next generation will be better why christianity has not produced other generations that are greater than the past because christianity is lacking in love you love the lord your god with all your heart this generation will bless my God. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a Covenant Partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank. Zenith Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 101-42-978-63. For inquiries, please call 081-804-33-225 or 090-738-38742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.